Here's a great problem that shows how converting between polar and Cartesian coordinates can be incredibly helpful. Look at the sum of these double integrals. What a mess. You've got arctangent, you've got secant, you've got cosecant, and you've got this arctangent, you've got pi over 2. It's just, it would be a long and tedious process to go through and uh, do the iter iterated integral on both sides and then uh, get an answer. I mean, you can, but that's not how I would do it. I'm lazy. I want to do it the easy way. So I'm going to convert to uh, standard Euclidean coordinates. Okay. So let's split this thing up into two regions. Call this region 1 and call this region 2. Okay. And let's just start from the inside and work our way out. So r equals 0, very easy. r equals 0, it's just the origin, not a problem. Now r equals 3 secant theta, right? Well, secant is just 1 over cosine. So this is saying r is equal to 3 over cosine theta. And what that's saying is that cosine, I'm sorry, r cosine theta is equal to 3. Remember, r cosine theta is just x. So this is saying that x equals 3. Not too bad. Now, what about this tan inverse of uh, 4 thirds? Right, we've got the arctangent, tangent inverse of 4 over 3. This is saying that tangent of some theta is equal to 4 over 3. Right? So let's draw ourselves a right triangle. There it is. Call that theta. And we know that theta, tangent theta is just the opposite side over the adjacent side. And then we want to figure out what this other thing is, this uh, thing, this hypotenuse, that's the technical term. Uh, that's just going to be 5, because it's a Pythagorean triple. 3 squared plus 4 squared is uh, 9 plus 16, that's 25. Square 25 is 5, right? Now, here's the trick. Suppose you have this on an xy uh, plane, right? And you want this line, that's really what we're interested in. What's the equation of this line? Well, rise over run, 4 thirds. y equals 4 thirds x. That's the equation of the line. Pretty simple. Not too bad. All right. Now, let's do the other portion of this thing. Again, we'll work from the inside out. So we've got 4 cosecant theta equals r, right? r equals 4 cosecant theta. That means that r equals 4 over sine theta. And that means r sine theta equals 4, which tells us you know, r sine theta is y, so that's y equals 4. Okay. Now, from this, this theta, we already know, we already figured it out, from that value of theta to theta equals pi over 2. Well, that's just going to be the rest of the journey from, you know, here's this line, y equal uh, 4 third x to theta equals pi over 2. That's this uh, bit that we're talking about. So if we put this all together, you know, what do we have? What are we actually working with? Let's, um, let's just use this graph that we already have drawn. Let's use a different color, though. So this side's telling us that x is 3, right? x is 0 to 3, and theta is 0 to whatever value of theta is contained in here. So this is r1. And then this second part, right? Um, we've got y equals 4. This is y equals 4. From theta equals whatever this is to pi over 2. So it's this region. This is region 2. And look at this. y is equal to 4. There's the line. There's the second theta. This is region 2. So what is this integral actually telling us to do? It's telling us to integrate from x equal um, 0 to x equals 3, y equals 0 to y equal 4. Now, r squared, that's just x squared plus y squared. And then dx, 
dy. And if you want to reverse the order of integration, it's super easy because you're just going to have y equals 0 to y equals 4. Uh, y equal, I'm sorry, x equals 0 to x equals 3. Same thing, x squared plus y squared. That's a 2. And then dy dx. I think you can figure out which of these is going to be slightly easier to solve. The double integrals on the left, the sum of region 1 and region 2, or either of these integrals on the right. I hope this was helpful, and if you have any questions, feel free to email me.